for a Maddich Tuesday with ESPN College Football Insider, expert, analyst, and all-around good man Trevor Maddich joining us now once again on BYU Sports Nation. Trevor, happy post-college football season day, and frankly, after how bad the game was last night, I'm ready to look ahead. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling great, and it was only bad if you don't love domination and greatness it wasn't competitive at all but holy smokes georgia what a what a finish unbelievable performance by georgia so let's just go ahead and start there before we take on byu and pushing ahead to 2023 has georgia supplanted alabama as the clear number one in college football absolutely absolutely i mean they they've won two in a row and what's more impressive is that they lost 15 guys to the NFL draft off of last year's Georgia National Championship team. All they did was reload, go undefeated again, win the national championship again in dominating fashion. And that was really the big question for Georgia is could they sustain it? Getting there is, is hard, but sustaining it is even harder. I mean, you go back to 2017 and they play Alabama in the national championship game and led in overtime until Tua Tango Bailoa through that amazing magic touchdown pass to snatch the national championship away from Georgia. The next year, Georgia's leading Alabama in the SEC championship game late, and Jalen Hurts as a backup came off the bench to lead the game-winning drive in the fourth quarter for Alabama. Then last year, they lose to Alabama in the SEC championship game, and it's like, we just can't get past Alabama. But then a few months later, they beat Alabama in the national championship game last year. So the question is, okay, so you got there. Can you sustain it? And after losing all those players to the draft this year, they got right back and did it again in dominating fashion. That's not just a great team. That's a great program. And if Ohio State makes a field goal, this is a totally different conversation. But that's how the game rolls, which is what TCU did. They won all these one-score games, right, to get there. But college football is officially over. We now look ahead to next year. We were talking about some of our hot takes relative to BYU way too early because it's January 10th. What's your hot take with BYU football looking ahead of 2023? There'll be tremendous excitement in BYU football. The offense will pick up where it left off this year, actually, and probably be a little bit better, I think. Wow. And because of those young receivers and because of an exciting running back room, Miles Davis and the rest of them, I mean, there's some real excitement with the skilled players. I think the defense will generate a lot of excitement. I think they'll give up some big plays, but with their new style of attacking, It'll be a different experience for BYU fans instead of sitting there watching BYU's defense sort of read and react and kind of keep everything in front of them. They're going to see BYU's defense dictate to the other side. Sometimes the Cougars will win. Sometimes they'll go over the top. But either way, it'll be a whole lot of fun. And I think this is going to be a, a tremendous season. And I think it'll be a bowl season. Trevor Mattis is with us on BYU Sports Station for a Maddich Tuesday. Keaton Slovis is the clear number one guy at quarterback coming in for his final year as a grad transfer. BYU has just added Jake Retzlaff, 6'2", 200 pounds, out of Riverside City College. He's a three-star, but more importantly, Trevor, he's the number one rated JUCO quarterback coming out of the state of California. BYU feels like he could be a guy for sure. How does this impact the quarterback's room, not just next year, but for years moving forward? Well, welcome to both of them. And it, it creates talent, of course, but it creates depth. And that's something that BYU hasn't really had to the degree that they've needed it in that quarterback room. I mean, when you look at Jaron Hall last year, even when he was banged up, he still played. You know, and so you didn't really have a whole lot of contribution from the backups. And that could be injury. It could be other things. I'm not casting aspersions on the on the backup quarterbacks from the 2022 season. Just to say that from a standpoint of starter, they're in great shape. Assuming Keaton Slovis wins the job, he's got to come in and win it now. And then now with his transfer, they're also in much more healthy shape from a standpoint of, of depth. And that's critical going into the Big 12 because all of a sudden with that Power 5 schedule, they need to make sure that in, in every position, especially the most critical ones, quarterback, that they've got the depth to be able to handle guys getting banged up. Last year, Stetson Bennett didn't begin as the starter. Uh, this year, Max Duggan didn't begin as the starter. So you certainly need a backup to be ready just in case. Baylor Romney was uh, the backup on a 10-3 BYU team last year. BYU didn't have Baylor Romney. It was 8-5. and five. Uh, Not saying it's all Baylor, but certainly you need a, a capable backup. When we push ahead to this fall and BYU in the Big 12, and certainly we hope and expect uh, reportedly the Big 12 schedule out in the next couple of weeks, is it 
fair to expect more than a bowl game for BYU football this fall? Just make a bowl is the expectation. You know, make a bowl is a good expectation because everything will be new. The schedule will be more relentlessly difficult. And and if they make a bowl game, I think you could say, hey, that's a good starting point. Uh, I think if they get to seven or eight wins, it'll be pretty phenomenal. And it's possible they could do more than that. We'll see. I don't want to put a ceiling on them. But I do think BYU fans can be so excited and they could generate expectations that might not be fair. And then they set themselves up for disappointment. So I think right now, Bowl would be a good season. Seven or eight wins would be a phenomenal season. And I think that's where the expectations need to be set from the outside. On the inside, their expectation is to win every game, every single game. Because every week, that's what they plan to do. Trevor, BYU, from a Cougars in the NFL standpoint, feels just about as relevant as ever. In fact, yesterday we asked, is this the most relevant BYU has ever been in the NFL? Jeremy and I agree, you got to go back to 1987 to look at just the sheer number of players that BYU had across the league based on the powerhouse teams, including the national championship team that you were a part of. But where do you stand in that conversation in terms of how relevant BYU is in the NFL and, and how that stacks up all time? Well, you, you go back to kind of that area you're talking about. You've got Bart Oates at center snapping to Steve Young at quarterback winning Super Bowls. That, that, that is something that uh, that is you know pretty high up there from a standpoint of BYU's relevance in the NFL. But at the same time, you've got Andy Reid coaching the Chiefs now to Super Bowl victories and all the great things that they're doing in Kansas City. And then when you look at the, the running backs now, Jamal Williams in, in Detroit just broke Barry Sanders' single-season Lions touchdown record, and he led the league in rushing touchdowns, for goodness sake. And so he's fantastic. And the fact that he's such a character, he just has so much fun, and he's not afraid to have fun in kind of a button-down age. I think that's a lot of fun. Tyler Algier in uh, Atlanta went over 1,000 yards as a rookie uh, running back for the first time ever in the history of the Falcons franchise. And the guy is just, he's just a bulldozer. I mean, Bill Connolly, who's a, who's a prolific sports writer, says that he might even be the best running back in the NFL. That, that might be a little bit of a stretch, but to be in that conversation is fantastic. Bill Barnwell of ESPN.com has Tyler Algier as number three for Offensive Rookie of the Year. And his own teammates are talking about how hard he runs and how much they respect the way Tyler Algier approaches the game. And then, of course, Taysom Hill in um, New Orleans has done things that just aren't done. I mean, since the merger, nobody besides Taysom Hill, I believe, <laughs> has rushed, passed, and thrown for 10 touchdowns, right? And so you put all these things together with the fact that these guys have a joy for the game that just pops off the screen. It sets them apart. It breaks through besides just being great players on the field. I think that does make BYU relevant in the NFL, and that's important for recruits. And, of course, then you've got the standbys, you know, Fred Warner, linebacker for the 49ers, <laughs> captain oh, and way. alpha among alphas, right? And then Kyle Van Noy with the Chargers. I mean, you can go through and name a whole bunch of, of players that are great players that are great football character guys that recruits will look at and say, hey, look at all these BYU guys excelling in the NFL. BYU can get me to the NFL. And that with NIL, those are two of the most important things for recruits as they look uh, at what school they want to go to. And BYU is being so well represented right now by its, its alumni in the league. And it's exciting to see who will also join that group uh, next year. Jaron Hall, Puka Nakua, perhaps Blake Freeland, we'll see, and so on and so forth. What's the connection for you between successful NFL players, guys in the NFL period, undrafted free agents and draft picks, and success at BYU? Because it feels like there is a correlation, especially the last couple of years, of this ascent from BYU football with the increased talent in the league. Right. And the thing about BYU as a culture is that it's well known in the NFL. There, there are certain programs that scouts look to and say, yeah, we can count on these guys. Clemson has been one of those programs where, by and large, Clemson players, for the most part, are going to be guys that scouts count on, coaches, NFL coaches count on, to be good football character guys. BYU has the same thing because BYU players come into uh, Provo, and a lot of times they don't come in with the five-star pedigree, but then they, they develop 
because they care about the game. I think Tyler Algier is a perfect example of that. He comes in as a walk-on, as a linebacker, converts to running back, ends up getting drafted, and then sets the, the rookie rushing record for the Atlanta Falcons with over 1,000 yards rushing, for goodness sake, in his rookie season. Well, that's not just because of great talent, although he is talented. It's because of the way he prepares. It's because of the way he approaches the game, the way he respects the game. And that shows up in all in the weight room. It shows up on the practice field and all that shows up on the, on game day. And when coaches and scouts and general managers look at the players they want to bring in, they want to bring in players that'll win, but why? Because they want to keep their job and they want to get raises and they want to bring in guys that they can trust. will give them everything they've got. And BYU is developing a reputation in the NFL of producing players that you can trust not only to play well, but to be consistently as excellent as they can possibly be based on the gifts that they've been given from a talent standpoint. Trevor Mattis of ESPN is once again on BYU Sports Nation. Because of association, or I should say future association with the Big 12 from a BYU standpoint, it felt like a lot of Cougar fans were rooting for TCU last night. So for TCU to show up and lose the way they did, how much does that really impact how the country, as far as a college football fan base, will view the Big 12? Uh, I think in the short term, it's not good because football is an emotional sport. And the emotional feeling that was left behind after that absolute wreckage of a game for TCU uh, is going to be negative for a while. But as that emotion recedes, I think people will recognize and appreciate that this is one of the greatest seasons in, in TCU history. I mean, they had an undefeated regular season. They beat Michigan in the semifinal and made it all the way to the final and then ran into a buzzsaw. And the way Georgia played, I don't know that anybody in the country would have, would have had, uh, uh, wouldn't have been blown out, maybe not by that many points. But certainly the emotion of it is what feels awful now. And it feels awful for the Big 12 now. But I don't think that changes the fact that TCU is still one of the best programs in the country. And TCU represented the Big 12 very well all season long. It was unfortunate what happened in the championship game. But that, I think, was more Georgia than it was TCU. Georgia was just absolutely dominant. And their coaches put together a brilliant game plan to negate what TCU did best. And I think that added up to the big victory. But but I wouldn't say that that TCU in any way did anything other this year than show that they're a program that deserves a lot of respect. Trevor, having seen the college football playoff at four teams now for a number of years, are you still in favor of expanding to 12 or even 16 teams? What number appeals to you? 12 appeals to me. 16 is a bit much. Uh, eight would appeal to me as well. But I think 12 is good. And, and the reason is that it keeps conference championship races relevant. That's critical to me because the 14 playoff kind of diminished the importance of, of a conference championship at the national level. Two of the four playoff teams this year didn't win their own conference. And in the format they're proposing for this 12 team playoff, the top six ranked, the highest six ranked conference champions are automatically in. That means that if you've got a team with a new coach or had some injuries early or struggled and maybe lost a couple of games early, you're not out of it. You're still in it because if you win your conference championship and you're one of the top six, you're still in. And that's important because every fan base in the country, every region of the country has a chance. And then it still maintains the conference championship uh, relevance. If you've got two teams, let's say that you know Alabama and Georgia play in the SEC championship game and they're number one and number two, well, it doesn't really matter who wins because they are in uh, um, they're both going to make the playoff, right? Yeah, but what ends up happening is the highest ranked conference champions, the top six, end up with or excuse me, the top four will make a bye. So the winner of that conference championship game uh, get a bye so that it's still relevant to win your conference. And that, to me, is the most important single thing about going to 12. I love the idea of a bye. And as we say goodbye for now, Trevor, we should mention that your name was specifically dropped by Jerem Jordan yesterday as part of the golden age of BYU's relevance in the NFL. So you need to take credit as well. Well, I, I think uh, I, I'm very grateful for the coaches that put me in a position okay. to be able to play 12 years in the league. Roger French and Mel Olson are two of the best position coaches I ever played with at any level that includes in the NFL. And then, of course, Lavelle Edwards for developing a culture that I think all of us benefit from and even the players from today continue that with Kalani Sataki.
the always gracious Trevor Maddich, and so insightful. We appreciate the time, Trevor. Thanks, guys.